Hey there, and welcome to the behind the scenes of the Rustic Songbird podcast. I'm Lydia Walker from rusticsongbird.com, and I'm taking you behind the scenes of an interview on the podcast. I hope you enjoy this video, but before we get started, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel. If you enjoy topics like this, we have new podcast episodes coming out every single week, and the behind the scenes will be here on this YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Also, if you enjoy this show, consider becoming a patron and supporting Rustic Songbird on Patreon. You can check out all the details at patreon.com slash rustic songbird. All right, let's get into today's show. My guest on the show today is Katherine Forbes. She is the founder of Designing the Row and creator of Music Biz Besties. And she's on the show today to talk about how you can stay consistent as a musician and tips for promoting your music, building your audience, and staying consistent without burning out, which I think is a really important part of that. So we're going to talk all about Catherine's story and what she's doing to help musicians and how you can stay consistent as a musician. So Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to share what you're doing, and I think it's a great fit uh, for my audience and different things that we're talking about. It is really hard to stay consistent as a musician, as a creative person, uh, when you have a ton of ideas or when you run out of ideas, and so we're going to talk all about that today. But first, give us a quick intro into you and your journey helping people in the music business. Sure. So I guess long story short, um, I started out playing piano when I was like seven, and I knew back then that I wanted music to be part of my life forever. So it's just kind of been this ongoing journey of figuring out what that's going to be. Um, so I went to color, college, majored in music. Um, from there, I still didn't know what I wanted to do, but I came to Nashville because it was called Music City. And I figured what better place to be to make a career in music than Music City. And I found my way into artist management and did that for about five or so years. And the lady that I was working for retired. So kind of at that same time, she retired and I was kind of finding my way into the whole digital realm for musicians. And I designed the websites for the artists on our roster. And other people in the industry were coming like, hey, who designed the websites for them? And it was kind of the perfect segue. Like I was able to kind of start my business and go from like full-time to part-time to hourly with artist management and then when the lady I worked for retired she just emailed her whole list of like 30 years of contacts um, and was like Catherine is now taking on her own clients here's wow. what she does and so That's I started amazing. designing the row full-time in 2017 and now I have a roster of over like a hundred people in the music industry like Grammy award-winning nominated artists and yeah, so that I do websites for musicians and just kind of being involved. I got into all the social media stuff and just helping artists and their online presence as a whole. And that's what I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also mentioned Music Biz Bessies at the beginning. When I was starting designing the row, it was like just me uh, on my computer by myself at home. And I was just wanting to connect with other women in music who were also chasing their big dreams and just kind of find this support group and mm -hmm. a place to get feedback and share ideas and lift each other up. So I started a Facebook group thinking it would just be me and a couple friends and it turned into like 300 the first week and now there's over like 5,000 in the group from around the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm that's all amazing. about community, social media, yes. lifting each other up. So that's me. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. Yeah, I love that. I love that you created a space that you wanted and a space yeah. that you saw a need for and then you just went with it and it's grown over time because of people seeing the value in it and seeing the need. So um, you're kind of in two different parts. You're actually designing the websites and have your company like that, but you also have the group of like encouraging and inspiring other people in music industry and um, helping each other out, which I think is huge. Uh, just knowing other people that are doing it and having friends and like encourage each other to not give up when it gets hard and uh, I love all of that so I have always designed my own website and I enjoy that type of thing but I know that's weird <laughs> and that most artists do not want to or do not know how to design their own website um, so when someone is maybe just starting to set up their online presence what is your advice for getting started and getting set up the right way 
Yeah, well, you mentioned, mentioned consistency at the beginning, and I think just uh, instead of trying to recreate the wheel on every different platform, just come up with like one message, one call to action. What are you trying to communicate? And just make that obvious, whether it's on your website or your social media. Um, you don't have to go crazy and do something different everywhere. The more consistent and like the more sane, the sane you can be on all the platforms, the easier it will be for people to know what you're doing and to actually get involved. So yeah, just don't go too crazy. <laughs> I think it's good to, you know, whittle it down and simplify and have that one message. It's also hard because if you do have a lot of ideas and you have a lot of things you want to share, it's hard to like get the clarity on, okay, what's that one thing? What's oh, yeah. the one message that I want to get out to the world? What is the one thing, the one call to action that I want them to do? Um, but it does really simplify the process. And then you know, if you have a bunch of different things, people don't know what to go to you for. But if right. you do have one thing that you do really well, people are going to know to call you for that one thing, which yeah. is really I mean, powerful. I fall in the I have a million ideas category. So even yeah. for me, it's hard to follow my own advice sometimes. Sure. Um, when I started designing the row, I was doing websites, I was doing social media management, I was doing some tour management, I was doing just miscellaneous things. So I think also in the beginning, it's okay to do a little bit of everything to figure out what it is that you do want to be that one thing. So don't beat yourself up if you're like trying to do a couple of different things because you just don't know. That's totally mm -hmm. normal too. But just keep in mind in the back of your head that like you're kind of working towards figuring out what it is that you do best. Yeah. And sometimes it will surprise you what takes off. So yeah. putting out different songs, putting out different things, and then seeing what people respond to, and then do more of that. So, you know, that, that's important in any business, but in the music business, I think uh, it's easy to feel lonely and like not know what to create and kind of get stuck. But if you're getting feedback from people and you're, because of putting it out there and saying, hey, I wrote this song this week, what do you think? Or, hey, here's a new, um, new thing that I'm working on. And maybe even sharing things that aren't done or complete or like, you know, all packaged and fancy. I think if it helps people get an idea for your style and see how open you are with the process, it can help people like follow your journey because they feel like they're part of it. Oh yeah. I mean, people love the behind the scenes, like watching how you get to somewhere, but sometimes yeah. that's the hardest part to share because we don't want to share something that's not perfect yet. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. And I say we, but I, I'm pretty sure that applies to pretty much everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's like a human thing. It's like yes. we don't we don't want to show off something until it's done. But yeah. that's actually the realness of that is actually what connects and endears us to people. So they're like, oh, I loved when you shared that one line, and then you were like, you know, plinkering around on the guitar, right. uh, <laughs> and it might not be perfect and polished, but. Um, even with a website, we talked about designing websites, uh, you want that to be simple and really easy for people to know as soon as they see it, what you do and who you are and how they can connect with you, you know, and, and that's it. So it does not have to be complicated. You don't want it to be complicated. Um, and it, can, it can actually take more time to simplify it than to just throw things out there. So what yeah. are the most important things that you would say uh, to have on an artist's website? If they're the artist, they're the singer, they're putting out music, what's the most important thing to make sure that they have on their website? Yeah, I mean, a call, I said this earlier, but a call to action. What is it? Are you, I mean, not right now, but are you promoting a tour or are you promoting a release or do you want people to sign up for your email list? If you just kind of put them all on there, and hope that people click on what you want them to, they're not going to do it. You have to like basically scream at them through the screen, like get on my email list. Oh, sign up for my email list. Do this. Like tell them exactly what you want them to do or else they're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say, I mean, if you have released music, which um, if you're going to make a website, I'm guessing you at least have a single out. Um, definitely make it easy for people to listen to that. And then I, like the email list idea because then you capture the email list and you can keep communicating with people after they've left your website. Yeah. So even just the simple wording of join my email list, it doesn't have to be fancy. They just need to know what they're giving you their email for. Right. Uh, I, I think I go to the spectrum of like being more complicated. So like for me, I'm like, okay, well we need to set up like a freebie into a funnel right. with like a welcome sequence. And then I'm like, uh, maybe I should just put up an email list for them. Like, so people know yeah. that they're giving me their email and I'm going to email them. Like it does not have right. to be that complicated, but sometimes we make it 
more complicated oh, yeah. than it is. Or um, like one mistake I'm thinking on my homepage right now is that I listed out all these different things that people can book me for or all these things that they can check out. And when you're talking about like one call to action, I'm thinking, okay, what's the one main thing I want everybody to go check out first? Right. Because then they're more likely to go there. Right. And if they see the long list of all the things, they're just going to click away because it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even on like your media or your videos page, some people will send me like 20 videos and I'm like, you need to pare this down to like six. Yeah. Pick your six favorite. Like, do you <laughs> really want people to watch that 20th one or do you want them to watch the first and second one? Mm. So yeah, on your website, it's just about showcasing the best that you've got out there. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. And just filtering it down to what is it that you want to drive the most traffic to? What do you want people to know about you or to see about you? Um, I think that's really helpful and important. Um, so you talked about designing the website. So setting them up for people and that's something that you do with your company. So if someone was wanting to hire you to do their website, what does that process look like? Yeah, I actually have multiple processes depending on like what feels best for you. Um, so option one is actually new for me. I just released in July some templates and with the template you get some video tutorials. So I will teach you how to do it yourself. So you oh, get cool. my design, you get to pick which design you want. And then I give you like 20 videos, like step by step, like here's what you need, here's how to put it in there. Um, and then you can have a professional looking website for like a fraction of the cost. Yeah, and, that's so helpful. Just yeah. to have that direction and the steps. Yeah, really and I just it. want to empower people to use their website as an asset for their business because yes. it really is. Mm -hmm. So if you just kind of like blindly go about it and it's something that stresses you out, you're never going to use it, it's not going to work for you. But if I can teach you how to do it, then you can like update it and actually enjoy using it. Yes. So yeah. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say, I don't even know how to log into my website. I don't know how to change it to put my tour dates. I'm like, that's not good. You need to at least have access to it. And then someone maybe to ask questions or at least have like a tutorial database where they could say, you know, if I want to do this, how do I do that? How do I add a link? How do I add an image? Like something simple. Um, right. Even if you're just wanting to update it with your new album to know how to do that, you know? Right. And so switching things out to keep it current is also important because a lot of people set it up once and then they never touch it because they don't know how to log in or they don't know code or they don't even understand how WordPress works. And so they're not going to yeah, know what they're looking at, even when they do get logged in. So yeah. it can freak people out and they're just like, I don't know what to do. I'll just hire just somebody to do enough. it. Yeah. yeah. But that's not a good look. Yeah. <laughs> when people go to your website and they see your last post, it's from 2017. They're like, Oh, next. Mm, so, yeah. yeah. So staying current is important and showing up like that, but also just, I think it takes some of the pressure off to know that it can be simple Yeah, and that simple is actually best. Yeah. It doesn't have to be hard. So you don't have to have a ton of pages on your website, but just like the basics. Um, I like to go in the back of my website and see the most viewed pages. And it's mm -hmm. like my homepage, the about page, the booking page. It's like the, the contact pages. That's what they want to know. So people want to come to the website. How can I contact you? How can I book yeah. you? Um, and so it is really simple. It is. Um, and that's like kind of across the board. It's the homepage, the about page, and usually the tour page, but probably not lately, but yeah, so simple. So what are the biggest struggles that you've seen with people in staying consistent? Is it more mindset? Is it systems? Is it a mixture of those things? What have you seen? Probably a mixture, but I think also time. Like when people don't know how to do something and I say people referring to myself as well. <laughs> um, we people as people. Don't do, yeah. People don't know how to do something. They put it off. Yeah. So websites are scary for a lot of people. So they know they need to do it, but it's just, they'd rather go write a song or mm -hmm. do something else. So I think that's, what I see the most is just people ignoring it because they don't know what to do with it. Mm, that's true. Yeah. And so just starting is important, like taking that step. Uh, like I mentioned, logging in, really just forgetting your password can totally sidetrack you for the day. And then you're like, oh, wait, I never even logged in to look at what's going on. So um, even little things, I think, like writing down your passwords is important, like having them in a place where you'll remember where they are. Or you can always reset your password. Um, okay. So there's that too. So some people can't find their original password. So you just need to make a new one and write that one down. Right. And even, you know, that being able to log in. Um, and I think it's empowering to understand 
how your website works so you can update it. So even if you hire somebody to design it for you and set it up and have the structure there, you need to have, you know, at least a little bit of knowledge in how to update it with new music, to add any links that you want to, you know, write posts about what's going on, add any press releases. There are things that you can do once you have the basics to like expand and add more bells and whistles later on. Don't feel like you have to have all that at once, but um, I think it is really empowering to at least know how to access it and know how to make changes. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So when you're, um, when you're talking to musicians specifically, I know we all have our quirks, right? Mm-hmm. So um, when you're talking to musicians about like being consistent, you mentioned time mm-hmm. and like the time that we put into things. I, I see a lot of people wasting time and like, they'll just go watch a movie or they'll like scroll Instagram or something when they could be creating, they could be making music or making videos or, um, you know, learning a simple thing on their website. Um, so what encouragement would you give for somebody who's wanting to learn that new skill or wanting to learn how to promote their music, but they're just not sure how to start? Yeah. I mean, think about the end goal. Why do you want to promote your music? and let that fire you up to go do the research to figure out why. Like, I think you found me from a a YouTube video I did about YouTube. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Just kind of like let yourself go into those things and figure out how they can help you promote your music because that's the whole point of the game, right? So if you're just Mm going to want to only do music, then you're not going to get very far. You have to learn these things if you want to get your music out there. Mm -hmm. Um, So just think about, that and how you can share it and let that fuel you to do those things you don't want to do. That's so good. Yeah. It's important to know why. And I even question myself all the time. I'm like, why am I doing this? And why is this important? And it is important to know why, because if you don't have a reason why you could be doing something else, that's important that uh, can actually, you know, make a difference. And so um, I think a lot of musicians get into that spiral of like, well, I don't know why I'm doing this or I don't know (laughs) how to do this, but you can figure it out. You can figure things out. People make websites every day. People post on social media every day. And there's plenty of experts that are making videos, free podcasts, content blogs about whatever topic you want to learn. And a lot of people will break it down into the steps that you need. So I know I've done that a lot when I'm looking for a very specific thing, I'll look it up on YouTube or I'll Google it and say, how do I do this specifically? Like, how do I do this plugin for WordPress? Or I don't use WordPress right now, but I'm using it as an example because a lot of people do. Um, And so if you want to know how to use a certain tool or a certain web builder or use a certain social media feature. You can Google that and people literally have step-by-step instructions. And I love that you're doing that in your tutorial for how to design your own website, like using your template, but adding their own spin on it and knowing how to do that. Um, I love that you've created that because it does fill a need. Every artist needs a website, but like you said, they might not have tons of time to put into it or might not want to, or just feel overwhelmed. So having someone guide you through it makes a big difference. And then you've got a beautiful website. Yeah. And then even just knowing what to put on it, like sure, WordPress or Squarespace or Wix or Banzoople, sure. they all have templates for musicians. Yeah. But are they the best templates for like content and layout? No. So that's why I created my own. Mm-hmm. Um, like here's exactly what you need if this is your first website. Like here's the checklist and here's how to put it together. Like you got a couple albums, here's exactly what you need. Um, so trying to make it so there's no barriers <laughs> to make mm-hmm. it happen. Yeah. And the more I talk to people that are creating music, writing songs, I hear a lot of people talk about releasing singles. And so you're releasing music more often than like an album a year or an album every couple of years. It's more like a single a month or a few singles leading up to an album. So you have new music more often and need to post those updates and make sure that people have the link to click and listen. And going back to your call to action earlier, like keeping that super simple for people. I'm, I'm to the point of realizing, okay, when I post this, I need to explain exactly how they can listen to my music. Like literally click this link and then click play or, you know, whatever it is, like click here to listen now, just that basic. It does not have to be like whimsical or fluffy. You don't want any like extra language Mm -hmm. the fewer words the better the fewer clicks the better so like i was thinking the other day about the difference between people having to click two times or three times 
mm. to listen because you could lose people before oh, yeah. they click three times. They might not know where to click. So you have to tell people and be very specific. Um, another example is for this podcast, I was telling people, oh, go listen to the podcast. And people are like, how do I yeah, listen yeah. to a podcast? Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're listening right now, you figured it out and <laughs> you're the winner. Ding, ding, ding. You're an MVP. Uh, but a lot of people that are maybe on Facebook and see something about a podcast or on Instagram and see something about a podcast, they don't know that maybe if they have an iPhone that the podcast mm -hmm. app is actually already downloaded and all you have to do is search Rustic Songbird in the podcast app and you can listen to this podcast that people are listening to right now. Um, and so getting people from one platform to another is such a struggle. And I use the podcast as an example, but music is the same way. If you want to get somebody from Facebook to listen to Spotify, or you want somebody on Instagram to go to your YouTube video, it's like pulling teeth. And yeah. it's like trying to explain to people exactly what you want them to do. And there's different ways to promote your music. And so I'd really like to go into that because people are probably listening to this and they might have a song out. They might have music out, either videos or songs on Spotify or things that they're wanting to promote, but they just don't know how to get it out to more people than they know in their immediate circle, their family and friends. So what are some ways that people can use their website, use their email list, use their uh, social media platforms to promote their music that actually works? Yeah. So there's a couple of things that came to mind. And the first, like the first big mistake I ever realized and kind of what like put me on this whole social media thing, whatever you want to call it that I do, is that I realized that people would release music, put it on social media and say, here's my new album or here's my new song. And it's like, congratulations. Like if you're just scrolling, I don't care, honestly. <laughs> and then that's all they do. They post about it. Here's my new music. Once. And then I didn't listen to it because you didn't make me care. And then you never showed it to me again. So it just got lost. And then you're like, I spent all this time like writing, creating, recording, producing, whatever, all this music, and it didn't go anywhere. So I want you to take a real hard look at how you're putting it out there when you are putting it out there. What are you saying about it? Is it kind of just like a desperate listen to my music? Or are you actually bringing people into the story? So I love to have people like answer some brand questions that I have, like why share why you wrote the music, share what it means to you, share what you were thinking when you wrote it, like make people care and make people listen. And that's when they are going to click and going to listen and going to share. Um, and that's how you can get it out of like your little inner circle um, is when you, you make people care. Yeah. And you brought up story. I think that's yeah. so important because a lot of people will put all this time and all this effort into making this beautiful, like writing this beautiful song, recording it at this great quality, going through all the craziness that is distributing and promoting and, and all that, getting it all set up. And then it's crickets. It's like yeah. nobody's listening to your music because they don't know about it. Not because right. it's not a great song and not because it's not great quality, but because you don't have enough attention going towards it. And having that call to action is really helpful of telling people that you want them to listen to this song. Mm -hmm. But then you went a step further and said, sharing the story is what's going to connect with people. Right. So if you say, hey, I, I wrote this song when I was in a really difficult place and this is what helped me get through it. Like, yeah. wow, people are going to say, I want to hear that. I want to yeah. hear what she went through or what she yeah. learned from writing this song or like, I feel that way too. So maybe this song will encourage me. People want to know what they're going to get out of it. Right. Like, okay, what's in, in it for me? Like, is this going to put a smile on my face? Can I jam out to this in my car? Can I, um, you know, can I just listen to this in the background? They need to know how it affects them. And so it's not about us as the writer or the artist. It's more about like, hey, I made this for you. And this is why it's important for you to listen to it. Exactly. That's a totally different posture than like, listen to my music because I'm so yeah. great and you're going to yeah. love it because, you know, I wrote it. yeah, I wrote it and I really like it. It's like, yeah. I, 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 instead of like, here's this for you to encourage you or inspire you or, you know, it doesn't even have to be a deep song. I go for, I go for the deep songs. I love that as a writer, but um, there's plenty of people that are like, hey, here's some instrumental stuff to jam to in the background. Here's some pool party music, you know, whatever it is that you're writing, let people know how they can listen to it or why they would want to. Yeah. Um, so I think that is really important to like tell the story or even just posting multiple times about it, mm -hmm. changing what you're saying. Like, 
hey, my new song is coming out and this is why I wrote it. Hey, my new song is out. Have you heard it yet? I loved being in the studio doing this and like sharing that behind the scenes. Um, and so things like that are just being intentional to share the behind the scenes and the backstory of the song. It lets the listener in and it's like, come check it out. Like this was how it was created and now you can listen to it. That's just a different type of thing. It will capture people um, and hopefully just make them stop scrolling so they don't <laughs> keep scrolling, but they say, oh yeah, this is cool. And then once they listen to it, hopefully they'll share it because they enjoy it, right? Um, so I think coming at it from that perspective is really, really helpful. Um, as far as like promoting on multiple f- platforms, I think that's a big question for a lot of people because they they might not have experience with different ones like they might be on Facebook but they're like do I really need an Instagram too and like do I need to be on YouTube and like what is this Pinterest thing you know there's like all of these other websites that you can have a presence on but what's your take on that as far as having a presence on multiple platforms yeah I mean it's kind of like the website thing you start simple start with what you know and then grow and add on to it so don't just start off like if you're brand new don't go create a Facebook Twitter Instagram TikTok, don't create all the things at once. It's like my Facebook group. I had it as just a Facebook group for, I think, over a year and a half. And then everybody was like, I'd love to see this stuff on Instagram too. Like they asked for me to be on Instagram. Yeah. Once um, you had an audience, like that yeah. group asked specifically for that. Yeah. And that's powerful. So don't just push stuff out everywhere to push stuff out. Be really intentional about it and make sure you're giving it the time it needs. Because like we just said, like if you're just pushing stuff out there. Here's my music. It's not going to do well. So just be really intentional. And once you feel like you've got one platform down, go adapt that strategy for the next and just keep continue building. Yeah. I like that you mentioned that start with one and make that really good. Like it could be the one place that you like to hang out. And if you, if you're enjoying a Facebook group, like build it from there, start with Facebook. Or if you really like Instagram, you can show up on your stories every day and build up an audience and then send them somewhere later. Um, And then YouTube is also a great platform for people to get their music out there Mm -hmm. because people are searching for videos all the time. People are watching videos every day and there's so much opportunity to be found as far as like being in search, but also suggested by similar artists or, you know, there's cover song strategies of doing covers by similar artists and then they find your music through that. Um, So there's ways to promote it on YouTube to a new audience, even though uh, you might just be starting, you know? And so there's different people on different platforms, but if you tailor it towards what they're looking for, then they're going to find you there. You know, you're going to them instead of like wanting everybody to come to Spotify and listen to my song. It's like, no, go to them, you know, post about it on Instagram or post about it on YouTube, wherever you are, and then build that up over time. Uh, so I think the being consistent part really helps to like have a schedule or have a plan. It can be a basic plan, but um, when you're working with people that want to release music and are putting stuff out there, um, what have you seen worked well that has worked well on like leading up to a release and then promoting after the song is out? Yeah. Um, Like I said earlier, sharing the stories leading up to it. Get people interested, get people excited, share behind the scenes. Why should they even be excited? Um, Yeah. Just sharing your stories really is all social media is really about a little effective social media. (laughs) Right. Um, And then afterwards, like I said, don't just post it once. Like when I first started designing the row, I was managing social media for several Grammy award winning artists. And I would literally like, you don't have to reinvent the wheel for social media either. I would post the same things every week. So like Monday, I would share a Spotify song on Facebook and Twitter and whatever, um, and just kind of go through their whole album. And then once I finished that, I would repeat it. And it would get likes and comments every time because new people are going to be seeing your post or maybe they didn't listen that one day or maybe this is their favorite song from the album you released five years ago and they see it pop up in their feed and they're like, yes, I love this song. Um, So don't be scared of like reusing and recycling your content. So like if you don't know what to say, don't create something new, (laughs) just share something you've already done. So like, on Monday, share Spotify. On Wednesdays, share a YouTube video. Um, 
It doesn't have to be something new and different every single day. Just keep people engaging. And even if they aren't listening, they're seeing it um, mm -hmm. and they know you're there. They know what you're doing. So just staying top of mind, staying consistent, making it simple. Don't try to recreate the wheel um, and just getting your stuff out there. Yeah, I think uh, using using tools like Google Docs or Google Calendar or a spreadsheet or something uh, can help you list out what your plan is. And you could have like a weekly schedule that's really simple. It could be like, okay, on Mondays, I'm going to post about this. And on Tuesdays, I'm going to post about this. And then you kind of have a plan for yourself. You can batch create a lot of images. You could do like one photo shoot and that's your photos for the next three months yeah. and schedule them. And you're not even on the app every day. You know, you could have it. <laughs> Um, kind of run on autopilot where you're not there, you know, having to post every day at a certain time, because that can get really tedious and nobody wants to spend their life like on one app or just, you know, posting the same thing everywhere that can get really old, really fast. So, um, so there's scheduling tools, like you can schedule posts on Facebook. You can use uh, scheduling tools for Instagram and other places as well. And that kind of frees you up with your time, because if you know, okay, this post is going out on this day you can do a lot of scheduling ahead. So uh, do you have any advice on that as far as like setting up a schedule or using scheduling tools? Yeah, I've been using Buffer for several years now and I pay the $10 level, whatever that means, I forget now, but I think it lets me post a certain, um, like I think the free version you can post a couple weeks and <laughs> the $10 one you can post farther out. Mm -hmm. So when I started Music Biz Besties, I was every morning waking up and before I get out of bed, what am I going to, what's my prompt going to be for the group today? Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is sucking my time. Yeah. Like I have to figure out what I'm going to say. Then I have to post it. Well, then I have to edit it and then post it and then maybe have a graphic or a picture. And then I have to sit there and reply to the people who comment. And it's just, it really is a time suck. Yeah. Um, so when I started scheduling, now I usually schedule like a whole month at once mm -hmm. um, for multiple platforms every day. And when you do that, you can create a consistent message. So when I was doing the everyday thing, it was like, oh gosh, what do I say today? But when you sit down all at once, all of a sudden your messages, it kind of flows because mm -hmm. you're just in that one train of thought. Yeah. And so over the course of time, when people are like seeing your content and taking it in, it'll all make sense and they'll start to expect what is going to come from you. And that's actually mm -hmm. a good thing. You want someone to scroll and see your post and just recognize that that's you without having to like really focus too hard. Um, so I guess the whole message of everything I'm saying is be consistent and don't recreate the wheel every day. Just come up with your structure, come up with your plan, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah, I love the idea of being creative within structure. So mm -hmm. having a basic plan that's like a framework, it's like a skeleton. It's like you can fill in the gaps with your creativity. Um, or you can do that in making graphics. You can do that in the words that you use. You can do that by, um, by supplementing with videos and spontaneity. Like mm -hmm. you could have your Instagram post scheduled out for the month, you know, like do it one day for the rest of the month. And then you could show up on stories when you feel like it or when you're doing exactly. things and it adds in and it's fresh but it's not highly produced. You don't have to really think it out. If you're like, Hey, I'm working on a new song and I just want people to see like what I'm doing right now or today. Um, then you have spontaneity within structure, which I really like. So I think there's a blend of the two, but your time is freed up to have that creativity. If you're not doing the same things over and over that could be done in a batch or it could be done ahead of time. Uh, so I think that's really helpful to have a tool like that. Buffer is one. There's another one called Hootsuite that you can schedule. I use Tailwind because I do have more of a Pinterest strategy going on right now and they have one for Instagram. So you can schedule to Instagram and also to Facebook and then it automatically goes to Pinterest. And so uh, that's the one I've been using the last few months and really liking it. Uh, but it depends on, you know, what your strategy is and what, how much time you want to put into being on all the platforms. So you don't have to do everything all at once. I really want to emphasize that um, we're just talking about different things that you might hear one thing from this whole episode and try that. And that would be worth it. You know, just try new things, see what works for you and then do more of that. So I think that's really helpful as far as staying consistent. Uh, we did talk about like images and graphics and you want to be consistent 
with your brand as well, like posting consistent messages. But also, um, if you're if you are a musician or an artist, and like your release might have a certain brand message, like it might have a certain feel or different words that you're using, different hashtags that you're using. Um, and so you might have brand colors for you as the artist or even for that release. So it's important to stay consistent with that as well and not just have all the colors and all the different styles, different fonts. Um, so I think that's another thing that you can simplify by just deciding, okay, this is the font I'm gonna use. These are the brand colors, like three to five colors. Um, and then what I love using is like graphic templates on Canva. And so that's what I've been doing a lot, canva.com. They have a free version, lots of images you can use, lots of fonts and colors. Um, and so I would make a template like for social media, choose the, one of their social media templates, um, figure out what colors I want, switch out my text, and then boom, they all look the same. They're all cohesive, download mm -hmm. them, upload them into the scheduler and boom. <laughs> you're done. And so it's not something where you have to decide every day what you're going to post. It doesn't have to be like a picture of you every day, which those usually do really well, but you could have quote graphics. You could have a lyric from your song. You could share different types of things to change it up for your audience so they're not seeing the same thing over and over and just getting bored with it. So um, what do you um, usually recommend as far as like setting up the branding part of, you know, showing up consistently and looking cohesive? Yeah. I mean, it's like what you said, um, picking brand colors and fonts. And the way I do that is just whether it's your album cover or your single cover, or whatever, take that picture and pull your colors from that. So not only are your graphics oh, cool. cohesive with each other, but they're cohesive with your photos. And that's when it gives it that really professional look. Um, and don't just pick random fonts, pick the same font that's on your album cover. Um, and that's when you can get that overall look and then put that on your website, put that in all the cover photos of each social media platform. Use that same picture as the default for all the socials. Like, again, don't recreate the wheel, pick one thing and go all out on it. I love that. Yeah. And just the intentionality at the beginning and just thinking through it a little bit and planning a little bit and then, you know, running with it. So, um, like you talked about the photo shoot, you, that made me think you could plan for the photo shoot and say, I'm going to wear this color shirt. Or I'm going to wear this thing. And then I'm going to use that color with my other stuff. So like, if you have a blue shirt that you like to wear, or like you always wear this certain color, or you wear, like I wear certain boots when I sing and I just know that um, I'm gonna wear these boots if I'm singing. So I'm like, let's get a picture of the boots because that's yep. gonna show up in different places. Um, and then you can have like that color in your, in your text and be consistent. So I think a little forethought as far as like what, what you're wearing in the photo shoot, where it is, like if you have different colored backgrounds. Um, I really think about that. I just did a photo shoot recently um, where I wanted a lot of white space on both sides of me all around. So there's room for text on the album cover. So we don't have to like stretch it or anything. There's plenty of room. So we know, okay, text is going to go right here beside me on the wall. Um, and it's just a little bit of forethought. Um, or if it's like a solid, like a brick wall, or if it's, um, uh, you know, like a solid color, then you can draw from that as well. So it could be a white wall or a brown wall, or like you could take it from your blue jeans or whatever that color is. So I think that's a really good tip of like plan your photo shoot. And then that kind of dictates what your content's going to look like to exactly. all match. And uh, my favorite tool for that is color.adobe.com. You upload your picture and it gives you like five or so different color palettes just pulled directly from that photo. Oh, awesome. Uh, so it generates them for you, the exact shade. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's color.adobe.com. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to test that out. I hadn't used that before. I usually yeah. did it myself, which, I mean, if this saves time, then it's totally right. worth um, yeah, using I used tools to like do that. It myself too. I like open up the picture in Illustrator. I'd make my own because I'm like, I'm a website designer. I have to do this myself. And I'm like, but why? <laughs> like, so I go get inspiration from Adobe. And then I can kind of, you can tweak it and make it exactly what you want. But yeah, it gives you like bright, muted, deep, dark, whatever the vibe you're going for. And it pulls the certain colors. I'm glad I asked that question because now I'm going to test this out on my new yeah. photo shoot and going to so use it and try it to simplify my life. Because yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't mind doing things myself and I have done that for a long time, but you get to a certain point or a certain level where you just 
don't have the time to do all that, or, you know, it's just one more thing that doesn't have to be done by you. So let the machines do it. You know, if it's like, if it's going to be an automatic thing and if it's free, then go for it. Right. Um, So like Canva is a free tool that you can use and you could take those colors Mm -hmm. that you get from your photo shoot and then just put them in as your brand colors, then select that on all your images and boom, you're good to go. <laughs> you I like it. Everything. Like yeah, the good. you just click on the hex code and it copies it to your clipboard. It's amazing. Yeah. So you can copy and paste the hex code to get the exact color that you're going for. That's so helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah Cause I think as creative people, uh, we can get caught up in like making the graphics perfect and stuff too, but really we just want to get the message out there and have people yeah. listening to our music. So it doesn't have to be complicated. And I really like using templates that has changed my life and also like scheduling and mm-hmm. um, batching things has been really helpful, especially being consistent with this podcast, being consistent with YouTube videos. And then now I am using more scheduling on social media as well for Instagram, Facebook, um, and Pinterest promoting yeah. things on Pinterest too. So uh, I think using the search engines and like using the platforms as they were created to be is going mm-hmm. to really boost um, building the audience. And there's a lot of ways to do that. So what are the best ways for people to connect with you, Catherine, and get connected with what you're doing and how they can work with you and learn from you? Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess if you're a female in music, whether you're a musician or in the industry, come to the Facebook group because I'm in there every day hanging out, chatting it up. Um, So that's facebook.com slash groups slash music biz besties. And then my website design company is designingtherow.com. And I'm music biz besties and designing the row on all the things, Instagram. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for your tips today. I think it's really helpful and also encouraging to someone if they are starting to set up their brand or their online presence and wondering, where do I even start? You know, so this is a great place to start. And I appreciate you kind of speaking into that uh, in practical ways and then overarching, just knowing why you're doing it and, you know, doing what you're best at. So I think that's really helpful. Thanks for your time here on the show today. Thank you. Hopefully it hasn't been overwhelming. Like here's all the things, but really the main message is simplify and just remember why you're doing it. Yes. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lydia. Real quick, I want to say a big thank you for watching this behind the episode here on the YouTube channel. And I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel for more topics like this coming soon. We have new episodes of the podcast every single week and share the behind the scenes right here on YouTube. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Also, if you enjoy this podcast and want to show your support, consider joining our Patreon community to support us on a monthly basis. You can check out all the details at patreon.com slash rustic songbird. That's patreon.com slash rustic songbird to become a patron today. Thanks again for watching and make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.